Behind the Dish is sponsored by DBAT. Check out DBAT.net for baseball and softball products, franchise information, and to find a location near you. And now your host, John Piper. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Dish, broadcasting live here at the 75th Annual American Baseball Coaches Association Convention at the Gaylord Texan. Ran into a friend of mine, Eric Crozier, from the McLean, Virginia area. Former big league player, played professionally for 11 years, coaching his eighth season at the Potomac School in McLean, Virginia, and director of D-Bat Elite East Coast. Welcome, Eric Crozier. Hey, glad to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Now, I met you uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, You have a big presence when you played. You were uh, 6'4", 220 or so. We were just talking off air. It looks like you could step out there and uh, play a little right field again right now. Some days uh, I feel the same way, you know, but I realize that it's a uh, it's a grind just to, to get in shape and what those guys do on a daily basis. It makes you respect it even more when you don't do it anymore. Well, being a, a leader and a coach of uh, the many kids that you work with, uh, you know, practicing what you preach, you know, uh, out hustling them and working out. Uh, I know you, you keep yourself in great shape, but... Uh, that must have an impact on the players that uh, that are in your program. I think it does from an instructor standpoint. Uh, anytime that you can, you know, act out what it is that you're trying to get kids to do, I think it grabs their attention even more. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons why I do work out, uh, so that I'm able to do the examples. Uh, you know, baseball players are visual learners, so when – they can see it in front of them for themselves. It, it helps with the instruction piece. Now, Eric, uh, you played ball for many years, um, college level. Obviously, you start off, uh, you know, probably seven, eight, nine year old uh, kid in the Northeast. You play college ball, and then you get drafted in the forty-first round, uh, which you know, st- statistically, folks would say uh, that, that's gonna be tough to make it, but. Uh, you made it to the bigs and, and had a successful career. You know, it, it's so funny that you say that because when you are drafted in, a, in the lower rounds and you happen to move up year after year, uh, people just start to root for you, man. So I think that's what makes it even even better for you. It, it makes you work want makes you want to work even harder when you meet people who have never heard your name before, but you know they start to follow you. I still get mail to this day uh, from people and. You know, it just makes you step back and realize just how blessed you are and what you have done. That's a great story. And, you know, we're broadcasting right here in the heart of uh, Dallas Cowboy Country, uh, a name that everyone's heard of if you follow football, Tony Romo. A lot like that. Undrafted free agent. We love those stories, Eric. Uh, You see it a lot in baseball, some in football, but not as much. Right. But that kid that, uh, you know, couldn't make their team as a freshman in high school that goes on to play college ball uh, becomes a, uh, you know, all conference player, uh, you know, in the SEC, ACC, you name it, Big 12, and then goes on and play pro ball. It, uh, we, we see that often, yeah. and it's a great story and a testament to, to hard work and determination. You know, I say it's it's like one of those tools that can't be graded. You know, all the, the game is, is built on grades and metrics, but one metric that you you never know the answer to, and that's, drive and that's something that i really try to talk to all of the young players that i come in contact with Uh, because i feel like the talent level nowadays there's there's some talented kids out there Uh, but at the first sign of adversity you know when you fail in baseball which i've done a lot of uh, you have to be able to find a way to pick yourself back up and keep going well let's talk a little bit about your transition from uh, uh professional ball to coaching the Potomac School, uh, you're in your eighth season. What's it like to work with high school kids and then also uh, your summer ball programs with D-Bat Elite? You're working with some of the, the best players in your region, uh, taking them to uh, some top-notch tournaments, some high-caliber uh, competitions. What's it been like for you personally working with that, that 15- to 17-year-old age group? Oh, it's rewarding. You know, any time that you try to teach – a certain aspect of the game 
to a kid and, and you see him get it and, and maintain it, it's more rewarding than almost your playing career uh, because you were able to do what somebody once did for you. When that light bulb pops on as a coach and uh, the kid or the parent starts nodding their head in agreement, um, I, I can see where that's very rewarding and something you can't measure, you know, something that doesn't end up on your resume or accomplishments. But, uh, you know, part of it is sending kids on to the next level or seeing them have a successful high school career. Let's face it, a lot of kids, uh, their careers can be over after high school. But uh, the game of baseball teaches so much about it and how to do it the right way. And I know you're doing that up there uh, in the uh, Northeast. You know, my, my college coach, Marty Miller, once told me that uh, the game of baseball is life. And that's what he tried to teach us in my four years at Norfolk State. And as hard as he was and as sometimes we thought ridiculous, you know, it was when those moments popped up after I left school that you could see that he was absolutely correct. Baseball is life, man. And if you can survive the game of baseball, I feel like you'll do well in life. You work with a lot of kids. I know some of your, your focal points is hitting, working with the hitters. You know, balance and stability, flexibility. We were talking earlier about, you know, you keeping yourself in, in good shape. Uh, looks like you could uh, probably do a, a power yoga class right now. <laughs> Actually, that's something we talk to a lot of kids, especially catchers, you know, working with their, their flexibility in their hips. Um, what are some of the uh, strength and conditioning programs that you instill in your athletes um, uh, focused on baseball? A lot of rotational power, uh, rotational power and stability. You know, because everybody that comes in my cage, they, they want to hit the ball harder, further. But they can't hold a balanced position for three seconds after a swing. And, you know, if you talk to any good hitter, you have to be able to hold your balance when you swing the bat, especially if you're trying to bring some, some torque uh, to, to increase your exit velos and your distances. So I really focus on helping my guys become stronger with their core, um, learning how to move correctly. You know, when certain things are out of sequence, there's no way you can have power in a swing that doesn't have sequence. Uh, so we talk a lot about those things as far as maintaining balance and sequence throughout your whole swing. The college season uh, is just 22 days away for some programs. Uh, uh, MLB spring training, pitchers and catchers will report really, really quickly as well. Let's take it back to when, when you were playing college, uh, what it was like as you roll into a new season, the mindset, uh, the competition, and what it takes to not only make the squad but perform at a high level. I put pressure on your summer, you know, when, when most of your friends are going on vacation on summer break. Uh, you are a person that's looking to improve on things that you need to get better on for the next season. Uh, so... You know, I don't feel like I had a real vacation until after I retired, you know, because every moment of a, a break was spent on getting better. Now, the segue into uh, the big show, you know, talk us through your first experience at uh, big league spring training. Overwhelming. You know, the, the guys that you watch from afar, uh, when you're in the minors, you, you pick certain players that you want to model your, your game after. Um, Carlos Delgado, you know, <laughs> he was a, a fun guy to just watch. You know, he might have thought I was weird the first, you know, 20 minutes of meeting me because him in the cage, man, it was just the way that he went about his business on a daily basis. All business, All right? business. Yeah. Uh, so it makes you just sit back and aspire to be somebody who can do the same someday. Any clubhouse stories? Uh, I know you're around uh, a lot of big league uh, players uh, for many years. Uh, any stories or any players that, that stick out that uh, you reflect on now post-playing days? Well, a lot of the stories I have come from the minors because that, that seems to be where most of the foolishness happens. <laughs> um, you know, pitchers. Pitchers are, are great clubhouse guys. Uh, they have a lot of time on their hands. And some of the things that they do, uh, I think there was one year in big league spring training with the, the Blue Jays, the pitchers removed all of the Oreo filling from the cookies and <laughs> replaced it with toothpaste. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, speaking of pitchers, we got a couple pitchers milling around uh, our booth here on the uh, exhibit hall floor, and they are a little quirky, aren't they? 
They are, man. They got too much time on their hands, man. And, uh, you know, I think they are what brings balance to a clubhouse, you know, because you got to have those guys that are light at heart. You know, they, they keep the fun in the game because, uh, as you know, for position players going out there on a daily basis, you could be in a, a rut. I never like to talk about slumps because I believe slumps are mental. Uh, but you, uh, you can't be in a valley where it seems like nothing's going your way and you can talk to a pitcher and he can bring you up out of there with something silly. Yeah, uh, most of the time things don't go well on the baseball field, uh, especially for hitters. So it, it is about, you know, getting your head right, you know, getting things pro- processing correctly in your dome. And, uh, you know, that's one of the biggest challenges that that younger athlete, uh, you know, again, that 14 to 17-year-old kid, faces uh, what could you talk to a kid and you you work with a lot of them about getting out of that mental slump and taking a more positive approach to the to the ballpark i think at the end of the day you have to remember why you play it you know it's a love that you develop from being a kid and the more you can just focus on the love that you have for the sport it kind of balances itself out you know you don't want to be a guy that gets too high or a guy that gets too low Uh, you want to kind of focus on being a guy that can stay even killed who takes the good with the bad you know I think I learned that late in my career there was a game that I went 0 for 5 and I think I hit five of the hardest balls that I've ever hit in my career and some of the outs that were made were great plays and I think at the end of the day the manager said man you swung the bat really well that day and I was like that's baseball (laughs) we were talking earlier uh, on a segment just today uh, uh, Coach Crozier about that, that a batting average can really whack you out because you went 0 for 5 that day, but you did everything you've been working on, you executed, uh, you hit the ball hard, it just went right at somebody or somebody made a diving catch, and on, on the stat sheet, you went 0 for 5. That's correct. And this is a tough pill to swallow, especially if you're average, you're on the stage where you're trying to pick it up, and you have one of those days it's a little bit harder to take as far as if you were a guy who was on the upper end of that. Coach Eric Crozier, D-Bat Elite, Northeast, head coach, the Potomac School, former big league player. Thank you so much for being on Behind the Dish. Oh, this was a blast. Thanks for having me. Bye. Hey, everybody. My name is Kyle, and I'm the producer for Behind the Dish with John Piper. We put a lot of effort in here to bring you the topics and guests that we think are relevant to the sport of baseball and to your everyday life. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you on the next one.